Elon Musk is working to revolutionize the internet by building a global communication system that will blanket the world in Wi-Fi. He plans to send a mega constellation of nearly 12,000 satellites into outer space, which will orbit above Earth and provide internet connectivity to the surface below. You could be in a jungle in South America and, and if you had just an internet link somehow, you could you'd have access to all of humanity's information. So it would actually effectively create a superorganism. The global brain is something that we're creating through the Internet of Things and artificial intelligence. So think of all of the input we have from sensor networks, from connected devices, from human devices, from computers and mobile phones, and put this together in one giant uh, place in the cloud, right? And we get this global brain. And this is what companies are working on that are in these fields. So it's all of the data, all of information, all interconnected, creating trillions of data feeds and at the huge possibility of orchestrating things, coming up with new intelligence, figuring out new ways of doing things, increasing efficiency, and of course, basically connecting everyone at all times, everywhere. We're essentially building a new meta-intelligence. And so we can see in 10 years, we're going to have many of those global brains existing next to each other. And that is both very powerful and also quite scary. It opens up, of course, a huge avenue of uh, being a global panopticon. And that becomes a huge challenge. I think uh, if we're looking at this in a larger context, it's quite clear that that is an ethical issue. How do we make sure that it actually is controllable? Uh, and who will actually control it? Will it be the guys in Silicon Valley? Will it be China? Uh, or, you know, who exactly is accountable? Who is mission control for this giant brain? Right? And, and this really comes down to a very simple realization. We have to understand that civilizations are driven by the technology, but defined by the humanity. I thought the internet would be something that would dramatically affect the future of humanity. It would be like, uh, like acquiring a nervous system. What this whole system is leading towards, folks, is complete digital control of everybody and a merging of human beings with AI. And when you look at Elon Musk and some of the stuff he's been putting out, he's saying that it is necessary for us to merge with AI. It's going to be the only way to save us against AI completely taking over. And he's saying this needs to be done through a neural net. And it goes into this. purpose of Neuralink is to create a high bandwidth interface to the brain such that we can be symbiotic with AI. Because we have a bandwidth problem. You just can't communicate through your fingers, it's too slow. If we have a third layer, which is the AI extension of yourself, that is also symbiotic. Um, and there's enough bandwidth between the cortex and the AI extension of yourself such that the AI doesn't de, de facto separate then that could be a good outcome. You're already a cyborg. You don't even, well, most people don't realize they are already a cyborg. It, that phone is an extension of yourself. It's just that the, the data rate, the rate at which, or the communication rate between you and the cybernetic extension of yourself, that is your phone and computer, is slow. It's very slow. And, and that, that, like a tiny scroll of, of, of information flow between your biological self and your digital self. And we need to make that tiny scroll like a giant river, a huge, high bandwidth interface. It's an interface problem, data rate problem. Solve the data rate problem, then I think, I think we can hang on to human machine symbiosis through the long term. Space is no longer a vast, empty void. Unprecedented quantities of new satellites, derelict satellites, and debris litter the skies, posing an imminent threat to America's space assets. The quantum entanglement is one of these bizarre, very counterintuitive properties of quantum science, where information can be placed in two or more objects and created in a special way that when you separate these objects over very large distances, they remain entangled. And looking at one piece of information or one object 
impacts all of the others. Normally, we say people doing experiments in different places are doing independent experiments. They have nothing to do with each other. But with quantum entanglement, we can actually make systems where everything that I'm doing is entangled, is mixed up with everything that you're doing, even though you're many miles away. To create an unhackable satellite, space scientists had to turn to the subatomic world. At the subatomic level, things begin to get a bit strange. And in this case, particles, when separated, continue to affect each other, regardless of the distance. A phenomenon that Einstein called spooky action at a distance. To relay a message, the satellite will create a quantum key, or a string of random numbers that encodes information. And these will be sent to receivers on the Earth. The quantum key will be able to travel farther distances as it will be carried through packets of This very minute, my phone is connected to some hub somewhere, which is connected to your phone, uh, which is connected to a server and connected to your laptop. And if we t round up all the circuits that are connected together and treat this whole big thing of all the machines, all the phones and servers, and computers connected together as if it was one big computer. And it's connected to three billion human minds. And that convergence is also now being married to Gaia, the system of the planet, the living system of the planet, through sensors and um, things that we embed into the environment. Those three layers, to me, form a single super planetary organism that I call the holos, it's the whole thing. The machine of all the computers hooked up together. Kelly's holos theory appears to be the consummation of his ideal. Everything and everyone is connected and, at the same time, feeds the machine with billions of gigabytes of data that is permanently flowing from our brain implantable neural dust, precise wireless recording of nerve activity. These are the interfaces that they're talking about. He's even talking about being able to inject a vaccine into people which would put a nano mesh over people's brains. And it's very interesting, folks. This is what they're talking about, an interface, a cortex interface, which will link your cortex directly up with the AI grid. How would that be achieved? And what if Everybody doesn't want to do it. That's the question because the neural dust that they're spraying everywhere, the smart dust, and smart dust is very, very dangerous stuff, folks. It can spy on your brain. There's been a lot of reports and a lot of studies that have come out regarding smart dust. And when you really look at this, folks, it appears that this whole AI grid that Ray Kurzweil and Elon Musk and everybody is talking about is simply being implemented without the knowledge of the people. We opted for a distributed structure, which was, in essence, a precursor of cloud computing that we all know today, and we called it the, the grid. With the grid, you are able to share resources, computing resources, storage resources. So you are able to share a, a lot of computers connected to, together and be able to use them as a single big computational resource. The Tier Zero Computer Center operates as just one part of the Large Hadron Collider computing grid, which is a worldwide organization, federation of data centers, that process the data that is um, produced by detectors. There are uh, around one, 150 computing centers. Tier Zero is the computing center at CERN, and Tier One, we have 11 uh, big computing centers that are available there for us uh, every day of the year. Uh, any time. Only last year uh, there were like 30 petabytes of data. This data all ends up in the Tier 0 data center. Then it is massaged a little bit, processed, and then it's sent off to Tier 1 data centers for further processing. The different LHC detectors are connected to the Sun Computing Center with a dedicated network of 10 gigabytes per second network. So it's a very powerful network. And they store this data permanently in tape storage. 
Then CERN uh, is connected also through dedicated links of 10 gigabytes per second as well to 11 computing centers all around the world. This data is uh, transferred, depends on the experiments it was to one or another. And then we have hundreds of other computing centers that are part of this uh, WLCD, this LHC computing grid, where we are also processing and storing the, the data. So you see the data is doing a, a very big journey all around the globe. Will it have a mind of its own? Yes. Yes. If we keep adding brains, artificial brains and artificial memory to this big machine, it will have thoughts of its own. It probably already has. And the problem is, is that we don't really have any good tools for detecting it, for understanding it, to understand the meaning of it. So it remains to be seen what interaction we have with that. Um, but if we take the most abstract idea of a thought, if we can give the idea that, you know, a mouse could have a thought, which I think it does, then certainly this global brain will have a thought. We are becoming mere nodes in a giant network that we yet but dimly comprehend. Called the Internet of Things, the plan is to create a network that will eventually include every single object on the planet. And as the public is finally becoming aware, such networks provide golden opportunities for corporations and governments alike to collect data and spy on the population. This is not mere conjecture. Before becoming enmeshed in an affair that ultimately derailed his career, Former CIA director David Petraeus bragged openly about how these smart technologies would allow intelligence agencies to spy on everyone in their own homes using their own appliances. Speaking at a summit for InQtel, the CIA's venture capital firm, Petraeus noted, Items of interest will be located, identified, monitored, and remotely controlled through technologies such as radio frequency identification, sensor networks, tiny embedded servers, and energy harvesters. In practice, these technologies could lead to rapid integration of data from closed societies and provide near-continuous, persistent monitoring of virtually anywhere we choose. Whether Petraeus' own downfall as a result of FBI eavesdropping on private emails as part of a plan to warn future would-be whistleblowers, poetic justice, or mere irony, it is nonetheless instructive. When everything that anyone does is tracked, traced, and databased at all times, from our dishwasher usage to our television viewing to our toilet flushes, no one will be able to avoid the gaze of the state, regardless of whether or not they have something to hide. As IT World's Kevin Fogarty observed, if J. Edgar Hoover were alive, he would die of jealousy at the technologies available to the would-be big brothers of today. The general idea of the global brain is that computing and communication technologies may lead to the creation of a kind of distributed mind in which humans and AI minds both participate but that collectively forms a higher level of intelligence and awareness going beyond the individual intelligences of the people or AIs involved in it. I have labeled this kind of distributed mind a mindplex and have spent some effort exploring the possibility, the possible features of mindplex psychology. The global brain mindplex, as I envision it, would consist of an AI system specifically intended to collect th together the thoughts of all the people on the globe and synthesize them into grander and more profound emergent thoughts, a kind of animated, super intelligent, collective consciousness of the human race. Of course, the innate intelligence of the AI system would add many things not present in any of the human mind contributors but then the AI feeds it, feeds it ideas back to the mass of humans who then think new thoughts that are incorporated back into the global brain mindplex. The advent of such a global brain might well help achieve what has proved impossible via human means alone.